Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to another exciting edition of Plank of the Week, the one show where you can be as judgmental as you like and you won't be cancelled. Well, probably not anyway, certainly not by me. Uh, there might be other people who will do it, uh, but I won't. We've got plenty to look at tonight and I'm wondering if we might be able to just sneak by without anybody mentioning Harry or Meghan. I'm not entirely certain that we're going to be able to do that. But let me introduce the panel. Uh, we've got Russell Quirk, a veteran uh, of this show. Thank you very much for joining us, Russell. Reem Ibrahim, uh, who is here uh, representing the youth of today. Uh, Isabel Oakeshott is here, of course, on the right as well. Thank you very much indeed. And Leon Emberali, for the first time, welcome to Plank of the Week, Leon. Former government advisor. Uh, very happy to admit that he's a former government advisor as well, which is always good. And here is the plank that we will be playing for, of course, uh, tonight. So, uh, should we get things off straight away uh, with Isabel Oakeshott? Because you've got the first one to, uh, tonight, Isabel. Tell us who it is. Yeah, so my nomination is for Susan Jebb, the boss of the Food Standards Agency. Yes. And, I mean, what is a plank? A plank is a lifeless, flat, dismal, joyless piece of wood <laughs> that doesn't really do anything much on its own. Um, and my feeling about Susan Jebb, whose idea is that we should not have any cake anymore in offices because it makes us fatter, I think is the ultimate symbol of human plankery. Yes. I mean... Well, it, it's, just, it's all look. Oh, here we go. Like a cake. Oh, oh, well, are you sure we're allowed? Tim has brought us so much oh, indeed. Indeed. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Tim, you might as well have walked like in here smoking a cigarette because apparently this, this, is like this, is this is as bad. These toxic cakes. This is as bad as... Passive smoking, yeah. according to Susan Jones, right? <laughs> very so, good. So very I'm good. saying let's have more of these. Absolutely. Yeah, not, not less. Definitely have one of those. Thank you very much. I mean, what Feel is free a... to use my uh, uh, very as large desk here if you want. I think now that might be a food standards issue. <laughs> 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 Mike's desk. What, Mike's desk. Mike's desk. So these are toxic in a work environment, right? Yes. So she thinks that the answer to the national obesity crisis, which is definitely a thing, is that office workers shouldn't bring cake in. And, you know, look, what's the point of working in an office if you don't get cakes? Yeah. Every now and again. I'm not saying you should have it every day. So but... as if workers can't control themselves, we've got no self-control whatsoever, uh, and that if there's cake in front of you, you have to eat it, no matter what the health consequences. I am a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's great. But I, I, do, I, I, I get the point. Smoke, smoking's different. You haven't got a choice. You inhale yeah. someone's smoke, whether you want to or not. With cake, you can say, no, I'm all right, thanks. I'm trying to lose some pounds or whatever. Ridiculous. Well, so you, this, I mean, you'll be able to maybe tell me the answer to this, because we were talking about this the other day. Food Standards Agency is, I suppose, what you might call some kind of quango, right? Mm. Run by this woman. I don't know who works there, but they've got quite a big budget, 110, 115 million quid. I mean, what do they do? I mean, are these the people that put the, um, you know, the five stars on the kebab shop to go, you know, safe to eat here, uh, <laughs> especially after midnight when you've had a few? I mean, what are they... What, they, they, they are... Your standards go down. So you, yeah. You'll have the four or the three stars. I mean, what are they drink? meant to do? The they, they are the killjoys that suck the, the fun out of food, essentially. Yeah. They, they're the ones who put calories on, you know, every yeah, single menu. Yeah, that's so and... just depressing, isn't it? Oh, so they did it? that, and I then they took them know. away again, didn't they? Because they now Well, say... because it was all a nonsense. Right. Because yeah. I, I'm a bit of a calorie person. I know what the calories are. And half the time, this is just made up on mm. these menus because you can't calculate it without weighing a load of so stuff. You're saying agents... I've got food right. in my face? No. no. No, no. But they're presumably the agency. No, no, I don't also. do that. No, that's a woman thing. Men oh. don't really do that. But they're the agency also that have encouraged people like Sadiq Khan to kind of, you know, ban any food adverts on the tube that might contain sugar or anything so remotely silly. interesting, joyful, or indeed, you know, unhealthy. Just let us eat our cake, for goodness sake. Have our cake um, and eat it, really. Little, Have our cake uh, and, and eat it. it. But you know what? I think Marie Antoinette would be completely against the nanny states, and I think she'd be very happy that I'm eating this chocolate Also, donut. given that most of the government now appears to be working from home, hmm. presumably they've got as many cakes as they want yeah. snuck in there without any, even the food standards agency even finding out. Yeah. Um, so you can eat your own cake if you're at home. I mean, thank, um, God, thank God my wife isn't regulated yeah. by the food standards well, agency. Well, I mean, I was going to say, what's the rule there? I mean, because... <laughs> what are you trying to say about your wife? Right? You know, if you're, if you're not <laughs> in the <laughs> office... me. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not in the office, are you allowed to eat cake or is it just you're not supposed to give it to other people? What? I don't know. What do you know? There's no boundaries to this nanny statism, is there? Yeah. Really? So presumably... And also, I think at one point she suggested it was like walking into a smoke-filled pub. Well, there aren't any smoke-filled pubs anymore because you can't smoke Because Tony the pub. Blair banned them. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and she's actually been end. going on about this. I was looking up. She's been talking about wanting more nanny statism since at least 2015. Has she been hanging around with Chris Whitty too yeah. much, do you think? This Ooh. is the trouble, isn't it? They get a little yeah. taste of it and yeah. then they go, yeah. oh, we literally, quite like this, no telling people intended. what not to do. Not a literal taste of it, unfortunately. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> yeah. not How many calories they, they don't have taste. any sugar. They're boring. Yeah. And I wonder if she's kind of waif thin. Is she kind of, you know, the back No, I did stone. check that out. She looked about normal to me. Normal. Yeah, in fairness, she looked about normal. We don't like one of the beasts. 
<laughs> cake is also a very British pastime, isn't it? Eating cake. I mean, cake, you go, eating if cake comes is around a, to your house, you offer them, you usually offer them cake. You don't it's normally a bonding go, experience, yeah. isn't it? It's, it builds team spirit. It's yeah. something to look forward to. It gives you the sugar rush you need to, to get through the Friday afternoon yeah. and in the cake office. Cake is in the office because it's someone's birthday, someone's celebrating something, it's something joyful, mm. and you want to share it with your colleagues. Mm. That's fine. But but the, thing that, the thing that I was amused by was Rishi Sunak actually came out against it and said it was a bad idea, which I think I'm pretty sure is the, it's the only thing um, that he's ever come out and said anything against, which is ironic given that he was given a fine, was he not, for going to a party... With a cake. <laughs> with cake, <laughs> which wasn't actually a party, but there was cake. There was, so there? so Tri this, lately he's been doing a few, like, mini little Conservative things, hasn't yes. he? Just, just to remind everybody that into he the is role. supposedly yeah. from he's the Conservative into Party. Conservative, yes. so he yeah, did... he's given a load more money away, hasn't he, to all sorts of people all around the country. He loves spending our taxpayer money, up. doesn't he? Yeah. Levelling up. I love yeah. how they now call it government money. I don't know if there's, Not there's a code. Not taxpayer money that we've There's a code. They don't say for. your money. They say, well, we've given some government, government funding. Money. Yeah. Well, no, you haven't, actually. As if it comes from that magic money tree at the end of the day. My pet hate today was the... Uh, the £48 million pound footbridge, which mm. they're building over the railway line in Peterborough, which apparently is going to help uh, to meld the Peterborough um, cultures together. I don't know what happens on either side of the railway line, but I'm pretty sure... <laughs> like the um, Berlin Wall. The it's like a civil war in the Peterborough. <laughs> must be made of some very precious metal. Because I don't know why it would cost you 40 million to build a bridge. Actually, I reckon we could and people. I mean, cobble something together for less than that, personally. I would have thought so. Or bring the army in one of those ponds, but it probably costs yeah, about yeah. in no quid. time. Yeah, they, they can do it in <laughs> yeah. a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need a bridge over the railway lines. You don't need trains running. You just walk across the lines. <laughs> <laughs> you know, surely <laughs> that would save you 50 million. We are not million. recommending that, by the way, no, from the health and not, safety no. people and their food safety food standards. You could be the token Susan Jeb figure. You could be the French one. You could be the killjoy as well. Right. So Russell. Russell Quirk, you've got one that's a bit controversial. Well, I, I mean, I don't think it is at all, but my nomination is Jeremy Clarkson, but not because of what he said in his column, uh, but because he apologised. Yeah. Um, so we all yeah, know, I agree with you. Actually. Yeah, so we all know, look, Jer Jeremy Clarkson, he's bold and he's controversial. That's why we love him, right? So because he... And he, he can be quite objectionable. He can, but, but there's no law, as far as I understand it, against being objectionable and you certainly there's certainly there's no law against being offended mm. um, and the fact that Jeremy Clarkson kind of quite out of character I think has rushed to try and placate Harry and Meghan although I thought it was a bit odd that he apologised to Harry and Meghan but only via Harry so he addressed it to Harry well I mean he strange. sent one email I mean are you supposed to send yeah, yeah, yeah. two but, emails but, but, if you're sending something to a couple so in my are book he, he, he is who he is uh, we love him for it um, he shouldn't have apologised for what is effectively freedom of expression freedom of what he believes is right and true about <clears throat> Meghan. He doesn't like her, he says he hates her and so on. That's entirely up to him to express that opinion. Well, maybe and he the... doesn't anymore, though, because he has said, hasn't he, that he doesn't, uh, he shouldn't have said it. Well, he shouldn't have said it, and he said he wrote the article in a rush, uh, and, of course, look, dare I venture that he's running scared because he's worried about the commercial implications in terms of ITV and Amazon. Uh, Amazon, I think, have said, actually, that they're now going to yeah. cancel him from Clarkson's farm and from... Um... I mean, that's ridiculous, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is it? ridiculous. You know, in the end, these are just words. Exactly. Now, I know people say words matter, and, yeah, they matter a bit. But he wasn't saying people should go out and actively do this to her, cover her in... he wasn't inciting anything. No, he wasn't. And he was just saying he I doesn't mean, like it, her. Also, they're it's celebrities, just... right? I mean, what's the problem? Yes, yeah, yeah, celebrities. as well, wasn't Yeah, it? celebrities, like, I mean, yeah, he clearly didn't want it to actually happen. Yeah, no-one wanted that. But he's that. also a columnist You're that writes... You're allowed to slag off but, celebrities, but he writes you? opinion pieces, yeah. by was... the very virtue of which you display your opinion. And it right? was supposed to be provocative. I yes. mean, obviously it was supposed to be provocative. I mean, I just... I don't understand what the whole... So he shouldn't have apologised. That's why I think he's a plank. Love him as I do, I think he's brilliant. Also, but that's just freedom of expression. And it didn't do any good either, did it? No, it didn't. I think apologising just meets, shows that he sort of you know backtracked on what he said. I think it, I think it was that like, you know people are allowed to say those things in the press and they say those things for a reason. But actually, I think that fundamentally, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They are just words. Yeah. Get over it. And they'd already. I mean, the, the newspaper had already apologised. Yep. You know, the piece had been taken down, so you couldn't read it anymore, just in case you wouldn't get. Well, I don't agree with that either. Well, no, I know, but the, the point is that had happened, so he didn't no. actually have to apologise. No, again. the reaction yeah. is completely well, the and then apolog I think he apologised three times now. The crazy thing is that if you weren't, you know, necessarily reading the paper that day or looking at his, you wouldn't have known day, about you wouldn't it. Have known it happened, yeah. but now we no. all know about it because it was made into a big stink. But so, do we yeah. think we're on a very slippery slope? Seriously, the, the serious point here is if people like Clarkson think they now can't say what they think and therefore either don't say it or say it and apologise, where does that leave us? You know, we're yeah. supposed to be in a democracy where freedom of speech and freedom of expression is, is, is sacrosanct. I mean, clearly not. I mean, well, there's very, really I mean, there's very few people, I suppose, who would have the courage to say whatever they want now. But 
um, in this country only, I think, because in America, for example, they still genuinely have a proper version of free speech, hmm. albeit that it's sometimes rather unpleasant. Well, but that's people the, who the live in America absolutely believe it. Yeah, I was listening to an interview. I've said this a couple of times already. Um, Brett Easton Ellis was was doing was doing his interview rounds. He got a new novel out, and he wrote *Macken Psycho*, which a lot of people at the time oh, said, yeah. "Oh, this is a terrible mm. book. It's all about murdering homeless people and you mm. know this horrible rich guy who's raping women and you know assaulting them and tying them up and doing terrible things." But it was a brilliant book and a great film. Mm. And you know, it's a novel. It's not real. Mm. Um, but he was being asked by this BBC interviewer. Um, so where do you stand on this whole freedom of speech thing? Oh, yeah. like, sorry? He said, I'm a writer. Why would I want anyone to tell me what I can't write? Yeah. Yeah. And there's very few people in this country, I think, that would say that. Yeah, you know? I think we, we've got to stand up for freedom of speech. I mean, yeah, there are limits and we should be conscious of that, be kind and all the rest of it, I get that. But you should be able to express your opinion no matter who it's going to offend and people should be able to be offended in good, yeah. you know, in good faith. And we like have that. to be careful where we think those limits are, though, right? Because those limits are... The bar is lowering and lowering and lowering because of the vocal minority on Twitter, because of the left, because of this woke direct of travel that we seem to be going in. So the bar needs to maintain its height, if you like, rather than it being ever, ever lower. Um, and I think Clarkson apologising is, is a symptom of where we're going. We'll be coming to sanitise. Like to say now, Russell, that you might later be cancelled for? What, can I say I hate <laughs> Megan too? There you go. Well, there you go. OK. <laughs> See you then. Um, and I'm you, not apologising. Are you peddling hatred now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the point is, is that, you know, it's very obvious when people like columnists write things, yes. they say them... Uh, sometimes yeah, a bit with their tongue, tongue in cheek, tongue isn't it? Slightly yeah. in cheek. It's entertainment, right? Yeah. And I mean, you know, I said a thing about Canadians last night, which everyone thought was very funny, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's complained and said, you know, why are you slagging off Canadians? You well, probably because won't I let want you to. In. If you try <laughs> and visit, they probably won't let you in. You know, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm making out that all Canadians are horrible people. It was just a, it's a throwaway line. Yeah. You know. Anyway, never mind. Reem, what's your first one? Yeah, so the one and only Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Of course. Um, he is sort of, I, I think, one of the most awful mayors that we've had uh, in London since, since the... Role since the last it's awful mayor. Fire. Since, since the great <laughs> fire, since the role was established, you know, City Khan, I think, is awful. He's enacted awful policies. I think we all remember sort of the uh, Happy New Year, uh, BLM fist in the sky, awful spend of taxpayer money. But this, I think, for me, is the last straw. So the EULA's expansion, you know, he sort of claims to be a philanthropic, you know, Labour uh, London mayor. But actually, this £12.50 EULA's expansion is just going to hurt the poor even more. And I think that what's so upsetting about this is sort of talks about the um, you know pe anybody that's against it sort of is is sort of try doesn't care about young children that mm. are going to die as a result of pollution. I'm sorry, but the fact that you think that these poor families should be spending more of their own money going straight to the government and the fact that this money is going nowhere, I think, is just awful. And you know, I think that Sadiq Khan is one of those people, one of those politicians that should not be listened to. Should just they need we need to get rid of him. And well, I hope I've got London a good idea, but let's him. let's have a look at something that happened actually today uh, in the London Assembly because Sadiq Khan has been under fire, not least because um, the suggestion is that he's been doctoring the figures to some extent, and some of the people who he says agree with what he wants to do apparently don't. Here he is. The Conservatives clearly do not care about our children developing permanently stunted lungs and clearly do not care about the premature deaths in our city directly attributable to air quality because they're in the pockets of vested interest. Thank you. And you mentioned some no, of the, uh, the... Chair, I'd like to make, have a point of personal explanation. I won't no sit chair. here and I won't sit no here and accept that. You've said the Conservatives... Hang on, 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 the Mayor has said the Conservatives on the Assembly do not care about the air quality that children breathe. You are saying that I do not care about the air quality that my children breathe. Assembly best, I'm the Chair and you make comments through me. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen. Do this is what they that? do. do you hear uh, they that? shout yeah. and scream at each other. Oh. It's an extraordinary claim, though, that he makes there, saying that the Tories, specifically, don't care about children's health. Well, it's an argument what? that the left have used tirelessly. They sort of say that unless you want to spend huge amounts of money or unless you want to sort of increase the amount of regulations or increase the amount of fines that we're allowed to, to give people, that suddenly that means that you don't care about people. Yeah. I think it's an absurd argument, first of all. What a hideous, vile individual. Honestly, he, he's using, by way of a defence, over the fact that it seems that he has 
effectively corrupted that consultation on ULES. I mean, he, he apparently, it's alleged, held back a whole load of answers that didn't suit him to get his own way. Now, I, I think Sadiq Khan, you, you talk about freedom of speech, he's the worst thing that's happened to London since the Luftwaffe. I mean, you could easily Seriously. turn this on Sadiq Khan and say, well, what, you don't care about all the young people that are dying of stabbings and yeah. shootings in London? I mean, what an outrageous thing to say. And how absolutely typically lefty to act as if anyone who disagrees with your policy must be evil and cruel and somewhere. heartless. Yes. It is utterly yeah. classic. But did he, I mean, he's not even trying to Hall defend himself. Also, over the, the, the evidence on which he bases that statement is very slim indeed. You know, he belongs to that uh, sort of mob that believe that 40,000 people a year die uh, of air pollution in London, yeah. which is simply unprovable. When it's one probably one. not true. At the moment, there's one person who has been said to have died of on it. The death but even that is unlikely to be the simple and only answer to why she Correct. died. It was a very sad story. She had mm. asthma, she had breathing difficulties mm. and all of that. And, you know, there was absolutely no evidence to suggest it. And also, by the way, London's now the most congested city in the world on the planet. It's taken me about an hour and a half to go yeah. ten miles. Yeah, but the fact you is know, he's That faked... can't be good for people's health, but and he's, he's created all that. But well, he's... he's faked a democratic approach, and then when it didn't suit him, he's done what all lefty totalitarian and authoritarians do, which is just to ma manipulate it on the basis of making it work to his favour anyway, despite... Yeah. And he's not, but he's not a Democrat, is he? Because the majority of people in London do not want Euler's expansion, do they? Because, first of all, it's more expensive. Secondly, I mean, he claims to be a, a, you know, a Labour mayor, sort of Labour in name only. It's sort of a, lot of a lot of Labour politicians do this, but they pretend to care about the working class. If you care about the working class, why are you making them pay an extra £12.50 a day just to drive their kids to school, and just to Rin, go to a hospital appointment? you know the worst him? thing? He's going to stand again. He's already declared what? that he's going to stand again. And, and he's going to win. win. I'm afraid well, he's going to win. I've seen a few of these mayors' question times, and he acts like such a plank, you yeah. know, genuinely. It's almost, it's almost, <laughs> that's why it's on this show almost every week. That, that would make <laughs> sense. Week. It's, it's almost as if no-one's watching. It's almost as if it's not publicly broadcast, because right. he's being, you know, so awful in he's, these, these yeah. question times. I think that's arrogant. And he's very, he's very reluctant to actually answer any questions, and he treats almost everyone who asks a question as some kind of underling mm. who doesn't deserve the time yeah. Yeah. Uh, the great man has for them. You know? And he dismisses facts, he dismisses uh, stats and data, yeah. he just goes on whatever he thinks is, is right in Sadiq Khan's world. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at the state of the Metropolitan Police, for which he has some responsibility. Yeah. When you look at the state of the, 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 as you say, the number of stabbings that go on, the state of the, of, of the, of the, um, the public buildings, even City Hall, which Transport, has been abandoned. Housing. It was built, City Hall was built <clears throat> for the London Assembly. Do you mm. know that it's sitting there empty? Mm. And yes. for many, many uh, years, it used to sit there looking filthy because they couldn't afford to apparently clean the windows. Mm. There's nobody in there. They've moved it away to somewhere like Stratford in the East End, mm. which means it's not accessible to ordinary Londoners now unless you happen to live nearby. Yeah, but done on a whim. He's and the whim. whole thing is, is just a sort of um, vanity project now yeah. for Sadiq yeah. Khan. It's Unbelievable. A, it's a very, very worthy nomination, Reem. It is. Mm -hmm. I think he's been nominated every single week since the New Year. <laughs> so, I mean, you know... He and he, be, he uh, deserves it, doesn't he? I mean, he, he does. But every week he's, cut, he's done something worse than the last week. Anyway, uh, coming up, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, another Prime Minister that may have gone fallen by the wayside. Uh, she says she's tired. Well, we're all tired of her, so congratulations. We'll find out who that is. This is Plank of the Week. More coming next. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We've got off to a pretty good start. Sadiq Khan, uh, I would have to say, might be making the front running. But who can say? The cake is also up there as well. Uh, we've also had uh, Jeremy Clarkson for saying sorry. Uh, coming up now, though, it's time for Leon Emirali to make his first and only debut first now on uh, on Plank of the Week. Who's your first one? Well, my debut plank is, is the Met Office. Yeah. So Monday came around and my phone is buzzing with alerts, with warnings, as if, you know, a meteorite is about to hit, hit, you know, hit planet Earth. What was it? It was a bit cold. Yeah. It was a bit cold <laughs> this week. It's mid-January and temperatures are a bit chilly. Yes. And the That's Met Office... That's freezing. It's freezing. And Met Office decide that that is enough to scare us all and to send these notifications. Is that a yellow warning? A or yellow is it a warning. Red warning. I think it's a yellow or... warning. Everything's got a colour now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Everything's got a colour. So I just thought the Met Office can, can you know, understand that we, we know it's a bit cold. We can look out our windows and it's fine. A bit of disruption here and there, maybe, but we don't need to be told about this. Makes you wonder this... how humanity's survived over the last few millennium, doesn't it? With, uh, you know, that, without the Met Office the telling us I mean... that not to go out. I mean, we're civil servants somewhere in government saying, 
actually, maybe we should close schools yeah. you know, when it gets below <laughs> minus one or something. Right. I mean, presumably it's because they haven't actually got anything else to do, because there isn't anything extreme happening. You know, we haven't got extreme flooding. Climate change doesn't seem to have destroyed London yet. No. So no, no excuse for lockdown. Also, they probably spent out most of the previous warning. week telling you that on Monday that would be happening. Yeah. So it's not even a surprise. Yeah. You know, so when it does happen, why are they reminding you that it's happened? Because, uh, of course, this week we also had a bit of snow in Manchester. I think they measured it at uh, sort of 0.0001 <laughs> and they closed the airport. And they shut the airport. Yeah, but for the off. first time, I actually heard somebody say from one of the airlines, no, I think their strategy at Manchester Airport might be a little bit overcautious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been, I've taken off in, in New York when they've had two feet of snowfall overnight. And I know that everybody goes, oh, yeah, but we're not prepared for that. Yeah, well, that's fine. We're not prepared for two feet, but literally, yeah. you know, a dusting in. Of not prepared for yeah. this country. A light if, dusting of snow. Come on. If we're not sort of seven degrees and grey, this country can't cope. It's right. either too hot in the summer and the rails <laughs> buckle yeah. on the trains, or it's you know too too cold and it's yeah. snowing. And, and, and then when it rains, everything floods. Yeah. I mean, I was down in Sussex last weekend, and half the county was shut underwater because you couldn't go down this road, you couldn't go down that road. And I refuse to believe that it's because the rain is so heavy that our infrastructure can't handle it. <laughs> I, I blame because the unions. Nobody... It's bound to be a union well, problem it'll be somewhere leaves, down the line. There'll be leaves that haven't been drained away. I once lived in Wiltshire and my house was flooded a couple of times in the same week because the entire town was flooded. And uh, there was a culvert that sort of ran through the, mm. the town, which was normally about that deep with water. And the reason I was given by the council as to why they couldn't dredge it uh, was that there were water voles living in it. <laughs> And they said, obviously, we can't disturb the water. Oh, of course. Like, but your house can be flooded. Are being flooded. People's businesses are being flooded and you're worried about water voles. Well, yeah. With the closed-off roads, weren't you tempted to drive down and just see? Because I've done that a few times. So you just go round yes. the cones <laughs> yeah. and often you find that there's actually nothing there. Just so you of water at you the bottom of some triumphant barrier. No, I mean, I've, I've always had, in most recent times, a sort of a reasonably big 4x4 four four type car, but you still kind of look at... a if you see water in a road and you can't see the road, you never quite You're not know quite sure how deep, how deep it, is, it might yeah. be. Yeah. And you'd look it really could end stupid. Bad. You know, it you'd could look end. really stupid on the phone going, um, I go through the, <laughs> the water. <laughs> I guess, stuck. Leon, maybe counter to what you just said, at least the Met Office for once actually got the forecast right. So the fact that a few days well, ago, it had already it happened. Be cold. It was meant to be snowing. It, is cold. it was meant to be snowing in London. It was meant to be snowing in and London initially. And it, and it didn't snow. It just, it just you know, was, was cold. Mm. So well, I, I thank goodness, because the whole city would have been shut down like Manchester. Yeah. Well, exactly. But I think this is sort of part of a wider problem where we're all just a bit too sensitive. And we just cannot handle whenever there's change. I mean, it's like what you said earlier about the temperature. If the temperature is sort of anything but seven, like seven degrees and very miserable and cold, then everything just stops working. But I think this is sort of part of a wider problem that we need to have these trigger warnings or we need to have these sort of sensitivity issues to sort of speak about things in order for us to be prepared. You know what? In life, we don't get prepared. And I think that the fact that we've been able to last this long without exactly. a Met Police weather warning, in, you know, <laughs> saying that it's cold in the winter. The Met I Office, think, not the Met Police. Sorry, that, the they've Met got Office. other problems. I <laughs> think that, well, yeah. well they're, they're not doing yeah, it. You're, you're right, it is a cultural thing. I mean, I've noticed there's like a whole new load of warnings now on the tube about, you know, tucking oh, your straps in. Oh, that's staring. Oh, that's staring. Oh, there's a you staring thing. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Stop staring no, stop at staring. me. No, no, it goes further than that. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, staring constitutes sexual abuse. It's yeah. an aggression yeah. I mean, or a microaggression. It's bad news if your eyes aren't that great, because you're kind of going... Stop staring. You get arrested for that on the tube. No, I know. Absolutely right. Anyway. Um, have a look at this, because this is my first nomination and it's somebody that I think we can all be glad to see the back of. <laughs> and so today I'm announcing that I will not be seeking re-election and that my term as Prime Minister will conclude no later than the 7th of February. No truth to the fact that she then went off with her soon-to-be husband to have some fush on chups, <laughs> as they do uh, down in Kiwiland. This woman, Jacinda Ardern, appeared on Plank of the Week quite a lot, uh, not least because of her rather unusual way of speaking um, and rather unusual kind of um, set of teeth, really. I mean, I don't want to be too cruel, but she has got incredible teeth, the like of which I don't think any of us have ever seen before. There's somebody um, else's teeth, I think. Uh, Someone they're definitely, who's got a bigger head. Not, uh, I have my favourite... Um, <laughs> Jacinda Ardern impression was when she said, don't talk to your neighbours. <laughs> don't talk to them. 
And you go, okay, sorry. So she actually told people to go into their houses to not leave. They had one case of COVID. They locked the entire country down, yep. stopped all flights coming in. Yeah, and the um, economy now is completely stuffed. Absolutely you? knackered, yeah. yeah. Um, and she also said, even worse, I think, which is more sinister, when she told everybody, you know, the one thing that you should know is that you shouldn't read any information about COVID except for that inf issued by the government. Mm. And yeah. only government issued and, and endorsed uh, um, information is, is right and everything else is wrong. And she Incredible. locked her own citizens out of the country. So if yeah. you happen to be abroad mm. when she imposed her crazy hermit kingdom lockdown, you were not allowed back in again. Yep. Like for some, in some cases, people weren't able to get home for like a year, two years, two or three years. I know. Yeah. Some, I mean, that people. is seems to be a fundamental yep. abuse of and your position. And have you seen the Labour MPs today on Twitter that oh, have come out applauding her fawning. and her reign? Well, here, oh. yeah. Well, well, that's one of the this things that there. amazed me yeah. was that here, particularly Nicholas Sturgeon, Keir Starmer, uh, Keir Starmer, come out, and they were all brilliant like leaders. Business of you know, this shoot shows you why women leaders would be better. She she was like the doyen, wasn't why? she? Well, I'm going to stick up for a bit. Because Are I you? thought when she first came about, just in Durand, I thought she was quite a, a good, refreshing politician. And then Why? COVID happened. Why? What? Just because she had long hair and she was female and young? She's young and pretty. But I mean, in, in, in a way, you know, I think. Yeah, that, see, that, that, got to, you. To see, to, see, you know, <laughs> to see younger women in, in positions of power can only be a good thing, is my view. Mm. But I do think she, she sort of lost it a bit. Which well, is the epitome of power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think you? that's what it is. I remember it, at sort of university, we had a university lecture on whether or not female leaders actually handled the COVID pandemic better than, but than male leaders. And they used Justin Gerard as an example of, of somebody that handled COVID quite well, yeah. which really? I thought was quite absurd. And what I don't understand is, you know, I've mean, sort of seen this stuff on Twitter. Young people seem to absolutely love Justin Gerard, and I don't know why. I think sort of just purely due to the identity politics stuff, the fact that she's a young woman. Mm. Um, but, you know, look at anything that she's done. Look at her track record. I think her entire sort of time as Prime Minister has been a whole load of plankery in itself. Yeah. So and let's face it, one of the reasons <laughs> she's stepping down is, is not because she's worn out by doing no, she's so about much great Service. Outed, she's about she? to lose the yeah. election. Yeah. She so she say, yeah, her, nice about it. her tank is empty, uh, and it's all about the polls. And the polls have said that her and her party are going to get an absolute trouncing in the yeah. general yeah. election. Um, so that's the real reason that she stood down. It's not because you know my job is done here. Right. Uh, it's because no, she's now she... incredibly unpopular. You can it, tell also how does does it? it does say something about you know what some people would like to see more of. There's the Finnish prime minister who gets the same uh, yeah. kind of attention, and everybody immediately assumes that she must be brilliant because she's a youngish, reasonably attractive attractive woman. Mm. And it's as sexist as you can be, really, yeah. because why would you assume mm. that just because she's young, she's brilliant, mm. or just because she's, you know, reasonably good-looking, she's great? That she's you not know? authoritarian. Well, yeah, which she is. I'm yeah. not saying you personally, I just no, mean no, no, look, the look, world kind of looks at them and goes, oh, look, it's so refreshing. I think it would be good to get, you know, good to get a diverse range of leadership in, in the world. I mean, it would be nice if the Labour Party in this <laughs> country started looking at women, maybe, as... as... Well, I'd love to see Angela Rain. Well, they don't know what yeah. one there is, are, Leon. How can they, but how can they appoint a woman leader? They don't know what a woman is. Well, this is it. <laughs> there are some brilliant women in the Labour Party who, who could be a phenomenal leaders, much better than Jeremy Corbyn, much better than Keir Starmer. Yeah. But the dinosaurs in the unions and elsewhere won't, won't allow it. So what's, what's ironic is that the Labour Party have never had a female leader. They sort of lecture the Conservatives about sexism and racism. Look at our cabinet. Look at how many female leaders that we've had. And they've all been Prime Minister, by the way. So I think, yeah. you know, just sort of that, that sort of uh, balance behind that. But again, I think people like Jacinda Ardo, look, we need to be judging them not based on their sex, not based on the colour of their skin or how they identify or how young they are. Judge them on their policies and she is a load of plankery. <laughs> what do you think she'll do next? I Earn imagine, a lot of money, I yeah, guess. She's Write a book, gonna speech... Her, her book would be really dull, though. Yeah, yeah, it and it'll I mean, be Boris's book, gracious. I'm quite looking forward to it. I mean, there won't be loads of stuff he doesn't put in there, but at least it'll be quite entertaining. I, I don't imagine. know. I feel like Harry set a whole new bar for you well, know, these memoirs. I yeah. mean, how can Boris's book ever be as revelatory, as <laughs> nuclear <laughs> as Harry? talk about his sex life. I realise I've just it. broken the non-Harry rule. No, I just don't think Jacinda Ardern's got much interesting to say. No, she hasn't, but the question's interesting because she probably will go on and earn a lot of money. She'll end up... Up being, be well, yeah, she'll be, she'll end up be being president of the World thing. Bank or president of the WHO yeah. or something. Somebody um, suggested she could be the new face of the, the latest mask. Uh, manufacturer, or, or maybe the, the maybe the forthcoming Black Beauty. Remake. Maybe she could star in Fancy with the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> one of those, you know, cover up half of her face. <laughs> her the nice. Mask Singer. <laughs> I'm down in there. The Mask Singer. You never get the mask off. Well, you know what? She loves masks so much. I'm sure she'd love that role. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great if they had the Mask Singer done up as Jacinda Ardern. Anyway, she'd have to be the Cheshire Cat or something. She would. Yeah, she? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Isabel, what do you have for us? So I have got the head of the National Union of Teachers, yes. a lady called Mary. Now, I don't know how you pronounce her name. It's 
boosted, B-O-U-S-T-E-D, or is it ousted, right. if you take away the B, or is it... As it should be. As it should be ousted, yeah. or busted, busted, which she is also. Yeah. So this is a woman who is leading uh, plans for the teachers' strike, and... Look, I just feel it is unbelievable that teachers are talking about walking out at this point. Our kids have only just got back on something approaching an even keel after all the hideous disruption of COVID. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think teachers have that hard a time. They do get great holidays. They only get I don't, weeks I just, off a year. Yeah, I know, it's hard, <laughs> isn't it? The average salaries in London are about 40 grand. So look, these they are not on the breadline. Um, and I feel great pensions that as well. It, mm. It's sort of like the nurses walking out and letting down patients. And as if children haven't had enough disruption already, the prospect of a series of walkouts. I shuddered when I heard them talking about online learning again. We all know that doesn't no. work. It doesn't work. So basically, for their own selfish reasons, they are now going to subject yet more millions of children to even more damage to their education. I think it's incredibly selfish and incredibly plank-like. And not yes. only that, but they were given 8.9% back in October, so they've actually had a relatively 8 .9. Well, yeah, um, nice. pay rise. Very yeah. nice. Thank you very much indeed. And I've said, you know, they get all these holidays, 13 weeks, but they always go, oh, yeah, but we do a lot of work during the holidays. Well, sure. then why don't you strike during the holidays? Yeah. Say that half term's really coming up. That is a really good plan. Half term's yeah. coming up. Go and strike for half term. That makes sense. You won't sense. Upset, uh, upset the apple cart too much with the or kids. Or maybe on one of their inset yeah. days, because they've always got those inset yeah, training. days, training. But they? they're, not, they're not terribly badly paid. No. 41 grand a year, the average teacher. Yeah, I mean, it's not... There are, there are head teachers pounds. making over £100,000 yeah. a year now. Yeah. And they have great job security as well. I mean, the likeliness of them being fired and the staff turnover is not that high in most schools as well. I mean, it obviously depends on the area, but a lot of the time it isn't. I think the fact that online learning was even being considered is it's just, just awful. awful. Yeah. Anybody that had children in their household during the COVID pandemic knows that online learning yeah, doesn't work. It doesn't work. work. It's and dreadful. Look, I, I, uh, over the course of the pandemic, I used to teach children with special educational needs. And... Trying to teach a child with autism via Zoom just does not work. And the fact is, this is going to let down more students and I think it's going to have an even more of a sort of long-term impact on their education. Actually, we'll sort of got to think about whether or not this sort of, um, sort of cohort of children going into the workforce when they turn 18, have they been taught everything? Have they been fully prepared? And the fact that teachers are now using this as an excuse is just awful. Well, of course, the, the, these children, they won't get that education back. So I think to Isabel's point, it should be on those teachers' comments the fact that they had almost the best part of two years off. Yeah. Now they want to continue to ruin kids' education. Uh, kids that are doing GCSEs and A-levels won't get that back. To your point, though, about salary, think about this for a second. If you're a teacher that gets 13 weeks off against the rest of us getting four weeks off a year, pro rata that, because that £41,000 yeah. that those teachers get is more like £55,000. And plus, and plus and then you add in the pension, which is yeah. sizeable. And but are we really I'm... supposed to believe, Leon, that these teachers are somehow uh, you know, spurred on to strike not because all the other public sector unions are on strike. We know it's about that. We know yeah. it's about yeah, they're, they're trying just, to bring the government just down. Jumping on the back of that bandwagon, mm. aren't they? I think yeah. they're seeing everyone else striking. They're seeing the government now start to realise that they're having to give way a little bit, yeah. otherwise the country's going to collapse. So they're but thinking it, now's a good time. Right. But, but what about on. also what are we teaching our own children? In What kind of example are they setting? That if you're not happy with your condition, you just walk out, yeah. you just flounce okay. out. I mean, that isn't the culture I want my children no, no. to have. I want to teach them about negotiating, yeah, not we, just walking out. We've definitely got out. to the point. So Mick Lynch, six months ago, Mick Lynch, the, uh, the general Bridge. secretary of the... Uh, the, the um, uh, Whatever RMT, it is, whatever railway it is, thing. I've yeah. tried to take it out of my head permanently. <laughs> um, he called for a general strike, yeah. and he's kind of getting his wish almost by, by default. default isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we've got to stop, unfortunately, uh, but we're not going on strike yet because we haven't finished the show. Uh, that wouldn't be right, would it? Coming up, uh, we're going to be talking about some pop stars. Another member of the cabinet uh, who makes it in this week. Uh, we'll be back with Plank of the Week after this. No question at all. Uh, welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're halfway through and we've already got some pretty good contenders. But so far, no mention of them. You know who I mean, that couple 
from Montecito. Uh, <laughs> although I suppose uh, they did get a mention briefly during the old Jeremy Clarkson scenario. But anyway, uh, they're not in it yet, but we shall see who's next because Russell Quirk uh, has got another nomination. Russell? Yeah, so my second nomination. So talking of organisations that have gone woke, like the Food Standards uh, Organisation Authority, whatever they are, uh, the National Trust this week have oh, come yeah. out with uh, an edict. They've been on before as well. Well, and deservedly, yeah. uh, seemingly. So they have decided this week that, um, that Henry VIII, yeah. the 16th century monarch, um, the fattest monarch in history, uh, wasn't fat. I love that you refer to him as the 16th century monarch. <laughs> there he is. I think everybody knows who Henry VIII is. <laughs> a little bit of education. <laughs> just, you know, Man I'm, who needs no yeah. introduction. I'm, well I'm, known as the 16th century monarch. I'm here to help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that he wasn't fat, he was disabled. Oh, no. Um, so this 30-stone this royal colossus right. um, wasn't fat. Does wasn't, he doesn't no have gout boost. either at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and in some way, this is designed, I think, by the National Trust to kind of excuse the fact that he was fat. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, being fat is very much a choice, in my opinion. You can yes. either decide to be fat by way of eating too much, not doing enough exercise, or not, right? Yeah. You have the choice. Yeah. Um, but no, no, no. In history, we're going to airbrush that particular thing out and now call it a disability, which, of course, is very concerning because if you end up being fat and therefore disabled, in the eyes of the government. Um, well, no wonder we've got about five million people on disability benefit. Does maybe that mean some you of them can get a blue badge. Well, maybe some of them are just fat, not disabled. So well, he's like I don't a new, doubt that. new symbol for the body positivity movement. You know, just <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. the ultimate yeah. body positive yeah. man because he was so fat and, he's and he just he just owned it, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Really. But, you but know, here's he where we go. I was I was away at Christmas. I was in New York and I wandered into this Nike store. And you know, in the old days, oh, don't get me started on this. The old days, the mannequins were ripped like this. Yeah, that was like the that was the kind of goal. That was your aid. Yeah, now well, all the mannequins now are huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It's, 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 it's okay. It's a new slogan. Brand. Just eat it. Just, 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 just eat it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just eat it now. What about the, the executions then? Have they got a, sort of a new narrative for that? That he didn't actually kill any of his wives. He just he was, disabled them. Just, just, yeah, disabled them. <laughs> them. Yeah. He's so fat. Reimagined them. Eight wives. I mean, that that's quite bizarre, isn't it? If he's so fat, he's on the verge of disability. Six wives. Yeah. I suppose that was okay. I mean, with a first five practice. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's something very odd going on with the National Trust, because did they not... I think it was, like, was it last year or the year before where they completely sort of revamped all of their main properties and, and changed all of the uh, notes around them. Was that and to do with the empire? To do with the that? empire yeah. and, you know... Well, airbrushing that, the Commonwealth. You know, they and, moved yeah. a few statues around and things were taken out and, you know... Yeah. But it's literally airbrushing history, written. Literally yeah. airbrushing history. It is airbrushing history. history. Yeah. It's unbelievable, yeah. isn't yeah. it? He was fat, let's just tell it how it also, is. Also, he wasn't always <laughs> fat, by the way, because... Because he was quite healthy when he was younger. There's young... Young Henry VIII, isn't there? Mm. There's a, a famous portrait, which I think is in the National Portrait Gallery, where he's actually quite thin. Well, he was really into tennis, he was really into sports, he was quite, you know, the sort of young stallion, to quote Harry. I mean, he sort of, well, should have carried healthy. on, he wouldn't be 30 stone. I mean, dare yeah. I say, you might accuse him of being a bit sexist as well, mightn't you, in this day and age? What, chopping his wife's head? Yeah. That's pretty misogynistic. Henry, I'd say he's a bit of a misogynist. <laughs> well, he, he only had two of his wives, the first one he divorced, so... Yeah, more okay. or less the same thing. Makes him a great um, person. Yes. Green, who's your next one? Yeah, so um, I think we've all sort of seen Jeremy Hunt's wonderful, not, video about uh, inflation. And I think it's incredibly cringeworthy. <laughs> and we sort of saw them sort of stacking those cups and trying to explain inflation. But of course, inflation was a result of the Russia Ukraine war and COVID. It was a result of an amalgamation of various different events across the world, except Nothing the government to do with him. policy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I also, think... wasn't it great the way he depicted all of these things in cup form? So, you know, his <laughs> COVID, and it's on a cup. It's a cup. It's COVID war. in a cup. Oh, no, it's been too stupid to And also, it's been, it's, yeah. been, it's, been, it's been drawn on like yeah. somebody who looks Talk about Talk about the intelligence of the I public. Mean, right? No, I yeah. mean, exactly. I think it's sort of incredibly patronising. But not only that, I think it's sort of him presenting this as fact, that this is the idea that inflation is only a result of these external factors that have nothing to do with the government. When, in fact, actually, inflation is a result of this sort of quantitative easing, the fact that the government have been... That the Bank of England sort well, of buying of England up government funds. the Bank of England have a big part to play Exactly. In they've been... Sp They've been printing money like sweet. This is a result of direct government spending and direct government sort of uh, reckless spending and then that, that sort of money well, the being... Fact the Bank of England should have put interest rates up or started to put interest rates up probably six months before they did. Yeah. The Bank of England governor, OK, you can say they're independent, but guess what? The Bank of England governor is appointed by the Chancellor. They're pretty useless. So well, they're no. pretty linked. Yeah. But also they're supposed to respond to government policy. And the, yeah. the, the primary issue with this quantitative easing stuff is essentially the Bank of England during the pause of the pandemic when the government are spending ridiculous amounts of money on eat out to help out, etc. 
all these ridiculous policies. The Bank of England then pr printing loads of money. And you know, Economics 101, anybody that's studied a bit of economics knows that when you've got too much money circulating those goods, that essentially means that we, we see inflation. But Jeremy didn't but mention this. He really, didn't mention you can't, this. You can't no. Fit that on a copy, on a coffee no, cup. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a big old cup. Yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe maybe we should have ordered a large flat away instead of the small. Who knows? Yeah. But I mean, the trouble, of course, with Jeremy Hunt is that he looks so strange, doesn't he? He doesn't look like a human being at all. <laughs> um, he looks like somebody who's sort of landed from another place, another world. He's uh, very Mr. Bean like. He's not one of those AI things you yeah. see on Twitter every he now looks and again. Like with... He's mm. surprised he's in the job. Yeah. Every also, time we, we all are. I mean, we all are. <laughs> <laughs> he should be, actually. Should be. I mean, didn't somebody at some point, when they were having this, you know, wargaming this scenario of him making <clears> this video, go... <throat> The danger, of course, Jeremy, is that you might look a bit of a prat. No, I, think, I think they probably would have thought that's a great idea, you know, something a bit different. They're all desperate to do something a bit different. Mm. Yeah. Grant Shapps has sort of set, set, the, uh, set the bar with these wacky, kooky videos. Right. He does them quite well. Well, I've got some even better news <clears> for you, because this has just happened. Have a look at this. Hi. One of my New Year's promises to you was to grow the economy. And today, we're announcing the second round of allocations from our levelling up fund. Please. Now, that's Rishi no. Sunak on his visit oh. to the north of England, where he very rarely goes, apart from when he goes to visit his swimming pool, uh, which is up in uh, Yorkshire somewhere, I think. <laughs> he didn't cost 26,000 at the last count. Um, you might have spotted that he's in the back of a car, Without but unfortunately, seat. he's not wearing a seatbelt. Mm. Um, and we've got a statement here from Downing Street because he's had to apologise <laughs> for not wearing a seatbelt. And it says, the Prime Minister believes everyone should wear a seatbelt. <laughs> and you go, but well, he's actually not wearing one. <laughs> Why doesn't he actually say something which makes sense? Like, oh. you know, he's just sorry he forgot to wear a seatbelt, but he put it on immediately, we finished filming or something. But for him Shouldn't to say... should he be fined about £500 for that? Isn't that I the don't know if there's a fine. Oh, there is usually a fine. worth 500 million quid. Yeah. Well, money. you know what? I want to see him pay the fine if he's apologising. Is there a fine for that? Wrong. Is yeah, he, yeah. Is he Late really? addition to the Blimey. nominations. I mean, is he now a nominee? Well, I think he's just a sort of addendum to Jeremy Hunt because they both come from they the go same together, place. They both they? made I mean, a stupid video um, and both of them have backfired. Well, then maybe um, we need to add in Michael Gove to what he also did today. What did he do? Which is to go to Morecambe and there's, of course, a statue of Eric Morecambe, yes. a comedian. So, and the statue is kind of a bit like this, the old Eric Morecambe uh, pose. So Michael Gove decided to stand next to it and adopt the same pose. Oh, as if oh, yeah. we don't think our politicians are comedic enough. Yeah, but Michael Gove thinks he's a bit wacky, though, isn't he? He, th he thinks yeah. he's cool, but Very I think, look, wacky. Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak like, like twiddle dee and twiddle dumb. They just sort of go together. They sort of talk about the sort of sp extreme amounts of spending and they're sort of trying to explain these economic policies to the public. Actually, they come across as incredibly patronising, first of all. And secondly, it's not conservative. They're talking about all of this spending yeah. and the fact that government it's is sort of... No tax cuts. Well, also, apparently, the reason that went viral, Michael Gove, is he couldn't actually stand on one leg. Well, that... is <laughs> a problem that, that a lot of people have. What's anyway. saying? Led by donkeys. Never yeah, absolutely true. right. Never true. Uh, Leon, your second the nomination. Please. Yes, uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe, yes. who is the UK's richest man. He's right. worth about 20 billion quid. But he doesn't oh. live here. But he doesn't live here. He lives in Monaco. Of course he does. Believe it or not. Well, Why wouldn't you? I can't say I blame him, frankly. No, I can't I mean. blame him. I, Are things and, any better in Monaco? I haven't been there for a while. Oh, mm. All I can there, tell you is I couldn't get a parking spot down by the marina. It's quite busy. I bet they don't have a ULES, though. <laughs> no, I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they don't. They but don't anyway, that's where he lives with his 20 billion quid, and he's decided he wants to buy... Manchester United Football Club. Why? And I'm sat there thinking, why? Why? Yeah. Why would you want to put yourself in the world of fickle football fans yeah. who you're never going to do enough for them, they're never going to be happy, when yeah. you could be sit, sipping your pina colada, paying no tax on a beach <laughs> in Monaco? And there's always <laughs> going to be somebody else who's got more money, <clears throat> better players. And a bigger yacht. Uh, and a bigger, yeah, and exactly. a bigger it's yacht. It's just ego, yeah. isn't it? And look, I admire the guy, great businessman, he obviously knows what he's doing, but it just stinks of ego. It stinks of someone who wants to be able to be seen and to be and seen as someone... And is he meant someone... to be from Manchester? Manchester? Does he have any affinity with He them? says he is. Right. He also tried to buy Chelsea when they were up yeah. for sale, and he's got a season ticket there as well, Mike. So okay. I think so, he's a fair weather... So is he from both weather. places, then? He's from yeah, Chelsea he's and from Manchester. Places, well, to be fair, yeah. most Manchester United fans are from London. <laughs> from London anyway, so, yeah. You know, maybe that, fits, yeah, from maybe that works fines. well for him. Absolutely. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because we've now reached the, the, the stage where, in uh, football, it's getting a bit tricky, isn't it? Everton last weekend, the, the board members were warned not to go to the, the football match mm. because their lives might be in danger. Wow. Yeah. That they were possibly under threat. Yeah. from the fans yeah. wow. who might attack them. Well, look, do you I, think, I'm, blimey? I'm, I'm a Spurs fan and I, I'm old there at the North London derby where they got beat by Arsenal. 
and the atmosphere there is toxic. And I'm thinking, if I was the owner of well, that of a guy's been club, charged, hasn't he? He's trying to kick the goalkeeper. Tried to, tried to kick a goalkeeper, and I just think there's a lot of toxicity in football, online, offline, in the real world. Yeah. Why would you put yourself? So do you think through it's vanity? That? Do you think it's ego? It's or I mean, I, I don't know what the Glazers paid for it originally and what they're now going to sell it for, but there'll be a nice big bump of profit for them. Maybe he thinks he can flip it eventually and do the same. Just a commercial transaction. Yeah, isn't it? I dare regardless say. of the fans. I dare say, and fans. that is unfortunately where football is. But there we are. Uh, that's how the World Cup ended up in Qatar. They didn't even get Plank of the Week for that, I don't think. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming up next, uh, we're going to find out who is the Plank of the Week, but also there's one more nominee, uh, and it's somebody that you might remember, depending on how old you are. Uh, this is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are reaching the final stages and of course uh, we've got some great nominees here. I'm not even sure uh, how I'm going to decide. There was a time when we used to actually have a democratic vote uh, in the old days of Plank of the Week but since we've moved up to this big studio I decide on my own now. You've got um, all Cinder, oh, I've got all to Cinder. I've got all to I should put a mask on apparently, uh, before I decide. But anyway, my final nominee before we do anything is Madonna. Now, Reem, you're probably too young to remember Madonna in her heyday. I am. But you she... probably hopefully know who she is, do you? I, I've heard of her. I think I've heard oh, you mention see? her. I've well, heard of her. Look, she was, well, I, when I was born, heard she was 45. Her. So she's already sort of past her prime. Or at least we thought that was her prime, but apparently well, not. Well, you thought that was her. But the trouble with Madonna now is if you see that picture, is she doesn't even look like Madonna. Um, I mean, that's the way she looks now. But I saw a new, even newer picture of her, and her face has kind of changed shape. It's more I've been, almond shape. I've been now. thinking maybe she's had a head transplant. A head transplant, you know, I know. think. <laughs> yeah, she's got definitely... her face from the same place that Jacinda Ardern gets her teeth from. It could well be. In fact, maybe she's got the face for those teeth, and they would fit it better. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll probably be accused of all sorts of horribleness for doing that. But but she's now embarking. Uh, on a Grace's Hits tour, and mm. that's one of the reasons that she's a plank. Not because I don't like Madonna. I've always liked Madonna's music. I think she's done some brilliant things. She did things before anybody else did them. Yeah. And she had an awful lot of... Um, but she's had her day, right? But she's had her day. But also she said, like many of these people, I'll never do a Greatest Hits tour. I don't yeah. really And what are they calling the that. Greatest Hits tour? The Greatest Hits tour. I don't, think, I don't think that's objectionable. I don't mind the fact she's doing a Greatest Hits tour. It's all the raunchiness that's going with it, which I find creepy yeah. and as, weird. As a pensioner. Yeah. yeah you just don't I mean, it is a bit. Sort of put it away time. Yeah, it <laughs> have, we, have we got some recent video of her? Yeah, we have got some recent video of her dancing. And apparently she's going to be doing... Let's see, there's the face uh, that launched the thousand um, It looks face a bit lifts. Korean. Yeah. It look, yeah, it doesn't look like her. Um, and I just find it extraordinary. And she's also... She's apparently going to do a lot of the... And a lot of the dancing that she did when she was younger... I think she's going to do the same was type brilliant. Of stuff. Well, if you remember the last tour she did, I think she broke her hip or something. Oh, and there um, was the one where she fell over, she fall, wasn't it? Yeah, she fell off stage or and something. And what about her you know? eating cat food? She's kind of limping. Well, limping she is about. sort of old enough to claim a state pension in the UK. Exactly. So you'd, yeah. you'd expect to put it away. I mean, look, she wears things that me, you know, as a, as a conservative woman, I wouldn't, would never wear at the age of 20. But she's sort of in her 60s and wearing these sort of incredibly revealing clothing. I just, I just I think, think if you were one of her okay. kids, you might be thinking, yeah. 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 Nah, come on, well, stop. I want to know, is yeah. who's going to this farewell? Which sold out, isn't it, apparently? I think it's sold out. Well, she's she's. Booked apparently five nights at the O2. So far, only one has gone on sale. So we'll see <clears> whether she actually manages to sell I'd out. Be surprised, who, who's her fan? But, base? I mean, I mean you're talking like people. two. <laughs> you're talking two to five hundred pounds. I think for a box at the O2, wow. it's twenty-four thousand. What? So I'll be expecting oh, you to wow. buy one. Okay. Uh, we'll all go. <laughs> um, now, uh, this Pretty. is the time when I have to pick a winner because here's the problem. Uh, there are so many good ones here. Should it be possibly the one and only? Um, Prime Minister, who's left the world of uh, politics this week, Jacinda Ardern. I think I like Susan Jeb, though, the woman from the uh, cake woman. The cake cake woman. Yeah. I think yeah. she's kind of the biggest nominee. And for a, for a part of me, I think Jacinda Ardern shouldn't have a place in history. I don't think she should have it. So I'm going to say Susan Jeb, banned cakes from the office, uh, the Food Standards Agency, plank of the week. Thank you to Isabel. Thank you to Russell. Thank you to Reem. Thank you to Leon. We'll see you next week. <laughs>